If you're a sports fan, you've probably argued with someone else about which team is better at some point in your life. Maybe you've even tried to do this across multiple sports. Either way, debating about teams is a tradition as old as sports having teams in the first place. So we decided to take on a project a little while ago. We wanted to throw our hat into the ring of this debate and try to compare teams across sports using math. Math that evens out team success across the four major sports in the United States. Over the last few weeks we've done research for the topic, compiled the data, and are finally able to run down our results in the experiment of using a math equation to figure out which franchises have the most and the least history behind them. This will probably start as many arguments as it ends, but let's give it a shot. Some important notes and ground rules to mention before we even talk about the formula that we used. We only counted completed seasons, so this is basically as of the end of 2019. Meaning that the most recent addition to the stat sheet was the Nationals winning their first World Series. The furthest back we're going for any team is 1903, because we're starting baseball teams off at the World Series era. That's more than enough time for them to make their legacies anyway. And it basically means that the sample years for all of sports are 1903 to 2019. Pre-Super Bowl era NFL or AFL championships are counted as the same thing as if you won your conference but lost the Super Bowl. Only undisputed winners of the AP MVP awards were counted for football teams since there's actually more conflicting reports on MVP winners than you'd think, for both the AFL and NFL. As we basically just said, we're counting AFL stuff too because that was treated more like a true merger, unlike the ABA which was much more of an expansion. So teams like the Nets and Spurs ABA histories were not grandfathered into this. Also thank goodness for the reference websites. A lot of time and sanity was saved with those. One more big thing. The move of the Cleveland Browns to Baltimore was tricky. A lot of people clump the old and the new Browns together as one team, but in the words of John Boyce, History is a collection of objective facts, not a chain of grocery stores. It can't simply be acquired and rebranded. We consulted a YouTuber and trusted football mind named Set the Edge for his thoughts on what to do here. His verdict was that the old Browns don't deserve to be remembered positively like the Ravens. So he suggested doing what we were already leaning towards and split the old Browns, new Browns, and Ravens into three separate teams. To explain the math that went into it, we're gonna turn things over to Matt. So they brought in the nerd for this one. Uh, so in terms of the formula itself, it's a pretty basic one. We have five statistics that contribute positively to a team's total score. Um, we have one that detracts from it, that being a team's longest championship drought. The coefficients for each term, the 0.5, the 0.07, the 0.025, those are predetermined weights for each stat. Um, the 0.5 means that the number of championships would account for 50%, the number of pennants would account for 20%, etc. Now those percentages are completely subjective, and because of that, it's pretty obvious to say that there's nothing objective about this formula. If you think the number of MVPs a team has had in its history is more important than playoff appearances, you'd get different results than we did. And even if you thought the relative magnitudes were good, you still may take some percentage points from one and transfer those over to another. So we divided each statistic by the total number of seasons for two reasons. One, because if we didn't, the magnitudes would be way off. What I mean by that is, say a team has won 10 championships. Then when you plug that into the formula, the 10 is multiplied by 0.5, which would give you 5, a number much greater than the result would be for some of the stats that already have a fractional magnitude, like a winning percentage. Um, the second reason is that dividing each of these stats by the total number of seasons just makes sense. A two-year-old franchise that's won two championships should be given more props than a 30-year-old franchise that's won two championships. The final note on the formula, we had to do something a little different for both postseason appearances and MVPs because they work differently across the four major sports. There are tons of different methods to go about doing something like this, but what we did is to normalize both of those stats by the league average. So once we compiled the number of MVPs for each team, for instance, we divided each of those numbers by the average for that particular sport to provide a more level playing field across all the major sports because like I said, they work differently depending on what sport you're talking about. In Major League Baseball, for example, two MVPs are handed out every year, one for the American League, one for the National League, while in the NFL, they only give out one award for the entire league. 
The playoffs also work differently depending on what sport you're talking about too, so we normalize that one also. That's pretty much the only need for a math nerd in this video, so hopefully you enjoy the rest of it, and yeah, see you later. With that out of the way, it's time to talk about some teams. Because we put 124 teams into this, we're not just going to show the whole list. That's just a no. So what we're going to do is cover the top, middle, and bottom five, along with some notable other inclusions along the way. To open our list, the five franchises that are in need of a narrative change. They're hungry to make a name for themselves and climb up this list in the future, or establish themselves on the big stage for the first time. From top to bottom in this group, we have the Columbus Blue Jackets, Seattle Mariners, Winnipeg Jets, Cleveland Browns, and finally, the New Orleans Pelicans. Sorry guys, balls in your court to flip the script. Luckily, the Pelicans have just the guy to believe in during a rebuild. Sad note about the Browns, by the way, they finished second to last. The original Browns finished 69th and the Ravens finished 21st. Yikes. Most of the teams in the bottom 40 or so are teams without championships. If you were wondering what the lowest scoring teams with championships to their names were, that'd be the Houston Astros and the St. Louis Blues. Other notables in the below average category from lowest to highest are the Bucks, Capitals, Nationals, Cavaliers, Cubs, Seahawks, Saints, Old Browns, and White Sox. To cover the five most average teams out there, who better to do it than our resident average guy himself, Chris. Take it away, sir. What's up, everybody? It's Chris Tagger, the average guy. Whatever you want to call me, I don't care. Just keep it nice. As my name suggested, I'm going to reveal and briefly break down the five most average franchises in sports, meaning these ones fell in the exact middle of the rankings. We'll go from the lowest rank all the way to the highest, just for the sake of organization. And without further ado, let's get started. First up, the Philadelphia Eagles. Thank goodness the Philly special happened and they finally won a Super Bowl to catapult them higher on the list. I bet the Eagles fans are either pleasantly surprised they're this high or are preparing to throw snowballs at us and accuse us of slander. Oddly enough, one spot above the Eagles are the Philadelphia Phillies. Maybe sharing a stadium for all those years morphed the two teams into basically the same level of success. And even after Veterans Stadium was torn down, the Eagles and Phillies are now only an eight minute walk from one another. It's gotta be that, right? Because this is such a weird coincidence. Now, the most average team of all, lying in the exact middle of the pack, the Miami Dolphins. They can keep celebrating their perfect season even as it closes in on being a half a century ago. But when the best player in the franchise history never wins a ring, you'll probably always kick yourself. A lot of football fans seriously believe Dan Marino is the best QB and maybe even the best player to never win a Super Bowl, which is just sad. One spot above them is, well, would you look at that? The Philadelphia Flyers. Maybe it's the water in Philly or something because this is just insane how three Philly teams are pretty much the exact same team, statistically speaking. And finally in this group, the Los Angeles Angels. Lucky for them, they've got just the guy to help them climb higher up in the power rankings over the next decade or so. And they've done a good job to bring him some extra help recently, so who knows? Maybe the Angels have a big push forward in the next decade or so. But there you have it. The five most average franchises in sports history. Biggest takeaway is, there is something really, really weird going on in Philadelphia. Alrighty, now it's time for the above average teams. Emphasis on who gets covered here will be the more surprising names of the bunch. For all their troubles, the Knicks clocked in at number 53. Might catch some people off guard there with that one. Even though they've only played two full seasons, the Vegas Golden Knights are at number 51. Baseball fans might be stunned to hear this, but the New York Mets are at number 49. Spend one day on Twitter and everyone will try to convince you they're the worst team ever. Something that surprised us was only two spots above the Mets sit the Boston Red Sox. They've won a lot in this new century, but their 86 year drought definitely hurt them a lot. I don't think many people would have guessed the Twins to earn a better score than the Red Sox here, but the Twins earned a better score than the Red Sox. The Washington Redskins are at number 35. So say what you want about them now, but they have an impressive resume. 
The highest ranking team with only one championship is the number 32 Chicago Bears. If we were to rank team musical performances, different story. I didn't come here looking for trouble. I just came to do the Super Bowl show. We are the Bears Shuffling Crew. By winning two championships before the franchise was old enough to start middle school, the Marlins almost cracked the top 30. Guess you could say they've had a historical awkward phase since they started team puberty. Even with their complete dominance over the NFL in the Bill Belichick era, the Patriots are only at number 28. Not winning any championships for 30 plus years turned out to cost them. The Pittsburgh Pirates are one spot above them, even without winning a championship for 40 years. Maybe we should start giving them more credit for their past. The Devils are in the top 25. Someone might want to tell Chance the Rapper that they exist. Breaking news, New Jersey has a sports team. Yes. After snatching two Super Bowls away from the Patriots, the New York Giants are number 19 all time. The world still keeps watching David Tyree on repeat. The Miami Heat are younger than Steph Curry, Antonio Brown, and Rihanna. They still manage to be number 17. Thanks, LeBron. Coincidentally, the Warriors followed the Heat as the dominant team in the NBA and land one spot above them in these score rankings. Now social media thinks they're getting Giannis in a couple years. No football team made the top 10, but there were three with really, really close scores at 11, 12, and 13. So the top three football teams ever are the Green Bay Packers, who could go higher on this list since at the time of this recording, they're still alive in the playoff bracket. They might have reached the Super Bowl by the time this comes out, but we don't know yet. The Steelers are the number two team of all time in the NFL. They're almost always good and reach the Super Bowl basically every decade. And that means the number one football team is... How about them Cowboys? Yeah! How about them Cowboys? We're getting into the absolute best of the best here. Michael Jordan's time with the Bulls catapulted them to number eight. The fact that they never even needed to play a Game 7 will always be amazing. If you're a Red Wings fan, sorry, but your team just missed the top 5. Time for the big part of this video, the top 5 teams in sports. Let's do this. Number 5, the St. Louis Cardinals. Plenty of Hall of Famers have suited up for the Cardinals and won for them. If it wasn't for a team we're going to get to in a little bit, they'd definitely be the number one baseball team. Number 4, the Boston Celtics. They have the most championships in NBA history, maybe the most dominant stretch ever, and Taco Fall. Most people probably expected them to be up here. Number 3, the Montreal Canadiens. 24 and 9 in the Stanley Cup, and they absolutely dominated everyone for pretty much 50 years straight. If they didn't chill out and take a break from dominance over the last couple decades, they could have been number one. Number two, the New York Yankees. The New York Yankees? The New York Yankees! 27 rings don't lie, as much as the rest of baseball hates that phrase. It's not like Walter White made up this analogy for no reason. It's grade school t-ball versus the New York Yankees. And at number one, the Los Angeles Lakers. Their fans protested when they weren't immediately the best team in the world with LeBron because they usually are. They're that good all the time. Baylor, West, Wilt, Kareem, Magic, Kobe, Shaq, and now LeBron. And at this rate, they look like they could definitely add a few more trophies in the near future. So there you have it, our entry into the debate for the greatest teams of all time. You can disagree and have your own opinion, but this is what our system gave us. We're gonna put a link to where you can see the full list from top to bottom in the description, especially if you're wondering about a team we didn't mention. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed, and collectively, we put a ton of time into this one. Feel free to subscribe or join as a member if that's something that interests you. But as for today, it seems like we're done here. Thank you guys. Catch you later.